Today, we're gonna to be starting a brand new video series. So this is gonna be similar to my old SimCity and Minecraft series, but this time we're gonna be building an RPG. So specifically, we're gonna be building a point and click, turn-based RPG, kind of similar to Baldur's Gate. I've been playing that game a lot recently. I'm a big fan of Dungeons and Dragons, so I wanna see if we can create something using JavaScript and 3JS that captures some of those elements. So obviously it's not gonna be as complex as something as Baldur's Gate, but I think we can make something pretty cool. So my approach to this video series is gonna be a bit different. For the Minecraft series, I planned all the videos out ahead of time, had all the code working. For this, I kinda wanted you guys to see my development process if I was coming into a project fresh. So you're gonna see a lot of the mistakes as I make them. You're gonna see and hear me talking through my design decisions. I'll probably end up having to change some things along the way as the game evolves, but I think this will be a bit more organic and will be a bit more useful to you if you're creating your own 3D web apps and games. So on the screen right now, I've already got very basic project set up here. I've just set up a GitHub repository. I've cloned that into my local environment and opened that up in VS Code. Um, so I had a little to-do file here, and this is gonna keep track of the game design document. So I'm not gonna do a full-fledged game design doc. So this is gonna be more of kind of a running to-do list of the things that we wanna do, some of the features that we want on the game some of the more salient aspects of it, just so we kind of remember what we're working on. To start off with, I think it'd be good to write down our objective here. Game type I want to create is an isometric RPG. You can think of a lot of popular games like Diablo or a lot of the um, real-time strategy games. They have an isometric camera. There's no perspective to it. I think this lends itself best to the type of game that we're working on here. And we're making a role-playing game, so that's going to be character stats, gonna be monsters, combat, um, loot, all that good stuff. So for the art style, um, I'm not much of an artist myself. I can do a little bit of art. Um, but we're going to keep this kind of the, the abused, low-poly style. So this is used all over the place. I think it's starting to lose favor now, but when you're a coder primarily like myself and you're not so super great with art low poly is a good way to go you can easily create some assets in blender or go and purchase some assets if needed um, you don't need to hire a, a full game artist for that so for the game map we're going to do a grid based movement system how Dungeons and Dragons works is you can kind of explore and you're free to move around. And then once you get into an encounter, it moves into turn-based combat, which is based on a grid. I'm going to make the entire game based on a grid. You won't really see that grid when you're just moving around and not in combat. But using a grid will keep the player movement really simple. If we had the player just moving freely around, the enemies moving freely around, it would make the whole... AI navigation bit a lot harder. We need to do a lot um, more complicated collision detection. So this was another decision to make things really simple so you don't have to do any of that. All you have to do in, is check to see if there's something in a particular square or not, and if you can move to that or not. That's really it. So you can see a lot of these decisions I've made are trying to keep the game very simple um, since it's just me developing it. I'm not going out and doing a crazy art style or doing some crazy movement system because building an RPG in itself is already quite complicated. So those are kind of the core defining um, aspects of the game. So some of the features I would like to work on for the MVP or minimum viable product, um, that's another concept is, you know, when you're building a game, you want to build out just a prototype of it. You don't want to get really deep on one feature. You want to try to build out that minimal experience that captures what you're trying to do. And at that point, you can decide if you want to move forward with the project or not. I'm just going to rattle out things I'd like to see. Um, I want some procedural dungeons, of course. This is a an d d type game. It's all about exploration. It's about fighting enemies. It's about loot. Um, but I don't want to have to manually create a bunch of dungeons. I'm going to have turn-based combat. Obviously, we're going to have enemies and monsters, so that's going to involve a little bit of AI, figuring out their movement, figuring out how they're going to do combat. Also, write down inventory here. 
and loot. You know, a big part of these type of games is getting stronger weapons, getting cool weapons, you know, maybe different spells. So we're going to have to implement an inventory system. Um, also going to need quests and we're going to need quest givers. So that means NPCs. I would like some type of town that is going to be our central hub where you can go and get quests from the NPCs or there's some type of job board. So this will probably be a bit further on in the project. Where's the combat and the enemies? We're going to work on that stuff first. Um, but still, I'm trying to capture the whole idea of what I want to work on here. And finally, we'll need some type of um, character stats. In d and we have strength, agility, intelligence, wisdom, charisma, and I think endurance is the other one. So we'll do something like that. So we can have different character classes. So you can write that down as well. Below here, I also want to add in weapons. Do we want procedural weapons? Um, I'm really into procedurally generated content, but it can get a bit vanilla if you can kind of start to see through the procedural random generation it becomes stale pretty quickly. So there's a balance between creating handcrafted content and procedural content. As a solo developer, procedural always sounds really nice because you don't have to create all that content yourself. The game is doing it for you. We do need to balance that. We'll start off, you know, very simple. Let's create another section down here. I'm just gonna list out the development process. So we're gonna start simple, build layer by layer. We're gonna focus on gameplay first, graphics and polish and optimization come later. Big mistake beginners make when they're first working on a project is they optimize too early. And the reason you don't want to do that is because the code that you're writing, A, might not even require optimization. It might just be good enough. You're writing a game. You're not writing software that's going to run an airplane, control systems, or something like that. So it's okay to write crappy code. If it suits the purpose, then it's good enough. Also, if you're prototyping things out, that code might not make it into your final build. Um, so you don't want to spend hours optimizing something and then later find out you know, that feature or how you wrote that really isn't well suited and you end up deleting that code. So I always kind of get the, the rough version down first and then you can come back and start to add some graphics in, add some polish as needed. I'm going to keep graphics very simple at first. You know, it's just going to be basically the primitives that come with 3JS. So it's going to be boxes, spheres, cones, cylinders. Um, we're going to do the best that we can with that until it really doesn't make sense to uh, do that anymore. I mean, to bring some other models in, maybe you start doing some animations. But definitely for the first few videos, it's going to be... It's not gonna look that great, but that's okay. That's that's really the, the best way to design a game. All right, so that's the development process. I hope that kind of captures what we're working on here. So let's start by getting this project set up and getting 3JS hooked up. We're gonna get our bundler. So our bundler is going to take that 3JS library and include it with our code. 